The labor market, though, that in focus this morning, adding more jobs than expected in November. Unemployment fell to a four-month low at 3.7 percent. The Biden administration has touted the year's relatively robust labor market as a sign of the success of Bidenomics. For much of 2023, strong jobs numbers translated into consumer resiliency, complicating the Federal Reserve's efforts to fight inflation. That strength still showing up in the latest jobs report. Let's get on over to our own Jennifer Schonberger in Washington, D.C. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, Brad. For more reaction to this morning's jobs report, I want to bring into the program Acting Labor Secretary Julie Su. Secretary Su, always great to see you. Thanks so me much for too. joining me. Thank you. Uh, so looking at this morning's jobs report, stronger than expected, uh, but a lot of it driven by the government sector and also replenishing on the manufacturing side with the strike. Do you think it perhaps under the hood it's a bit of a cooler report and we've seen private sector jobs also slowing. Do you expect that trend to continue into next year? No, I mean, I think this is a strong report and I'm not going to get tired of coming here and saying that it's reflective of Bidenomics working and, you know, it's 199,000 jobs from last month. We also have the lowest unemployment rate for the longest period of time since Diana Ross topped the charts. So it's 3.7 percent that ticked down from last month's 3. 0.9%, but we always look at broader trends and what that means. It's also broad-based recovery, right? Multiple industries um, uh, are, are coming back. And, you know, overall, that means, you know, it's 14.1 million jobs created since the president came into office, combined with low unemployment, com combined with, you know, wages going up and labor force participation rate and inflation starting to come down. Those are all exactly what the president wants to see in a strong economy that's good for the working class and the middle class. We saw retail employment drop in November. Businesses have said that they're hiring fewer workers for the holidays. Ominous sign going forward? No, I mean, the real story here is that consumer spending remains strong. People are buying things and they're getting them. And again, reflective of the broader health of the economy. We saw growth in leisure and hospitality. People are traveling to see their aunt for the holidays. They're going out to restaurants and bars. All signs that people um, not just feel confident, but have a little bit of that breathing room the president talks about, right? Are able to do some spending. The other thing is that in retail, right, this is reflective of other trends. We see, you know, online shopping has grown. That means fewer people going into department stores. Um, so that, I think, you know, there's other things that factor in here. But just remember, a couple years ago, around this time, we were talking about, you know, we would have to cancel Christmas because of the supply chain issues that we were seeing. Ships lined up at the ports, not able to unload um, uh, unload their, uh, their inventory. And we don't see that now, right? We have had, with a laser focus, addressed supply chain issues so that, again, people are buying things and they're getting them. And part of that ties to how when workers do well, the economy does well. Right? Across the supply chain, we've seen from dock workers to delivery drivers to auto workers going to the bargaining table, entering into contracts that provide for long term their security, but also the stability of their industries. And that's what the president means when he says when workers do well, employers prosper and the nation is stronger. Micron is striking a deal this morning, a union deal for construction of a $15 billion uh, chip making facility. 37,000 construction workers are going to be hired, the majority of those coming from unions. At the same time, more than 1,000 workers at Volkswagen's Tennessee facility now voting for representation from the UAW. What does this mean for union membership in this country going forward? What is your outlook? What's driving this? How much of this is being driven by the CHIPS Act? We are seeing a moment in which workers are, um, are, are doing better. Right? This is a tight labor market that doesn't happen by accident. It happens when you have economic policies that, that, that prioritize the well-being of working people, something that the president says and does every single day. Um, that has meant that, you know, part of this is unions, again, bargaining at the table for historic wage increases, for retirement benefits, for security, but also for health and safety and staffing and other things from hospitality workers to, uh, to um, health care workers to Hollywood. And so this is a moment in which there's broad support for unions, both from workers and also from the public. And so companies are seeing the benefits too. So Micron entered into an agreement where they're going to use a project labor agreement for its construction. That means that there will be 
uh, construction workers who are paid good union wages, who are, you know, have the security and stability that comes with, with, with that kind of job. And it is being driven by the enormous federal investments that the president's leadership has made possible so that we have construction, we have manufacturing, we have clean energy jobs in communities, and that those are good jobs that can help a family to, uh, uh, you know, raise a family and have a family sustaining wage. So do you expect union jobs will increase over the next year? Yeah, I mean, we've heard that, right? We've heard uh, not just union leaders say that they're going to organize, but also workers saying, you know, we're interested in having the kind of voice at the table that, that, that a union brings with it. And part of that is one other thing that's happening is while workers from unions are seeing better contracts and, 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 uh, and more security, it's having an effect outside of the unionized workforce. So again, going back to the UAW, you mentioned you know, Volkswagen and, and you know, workers organizing. After the UAW reached its historic agreement with the big three, we saw non-union employers also increase wages, sometimes in double digits for non-unionized workers. And that's a sign that, again, what's good for workers and what, you know, what, what unions bring about in terms of the well-being of workers also has uh, effects elsewhere. And I think other workers are saying, hey, we want a part of that. And to your point and the fact that you said that you don't think what we're seeing for the holiday shopping season is an ominous side for uh, the labor market, how does this bode for the administration's outlook for the economy? Because you're painting a very strong picture. Yeah, it bodes well. I mean, this is Bidenomics in action, right? This is what the president has said from day one. If we invest in America, and we invest in America's workers, if we build strong roads and bridges and make sure clean drinking water flows out of every faucet and provide reliable, affordable internet in every home, we can also create good jobs in those communities. And everyone knows, right, a good job changes lives, a good job transforms families. And so this is, again, record levels of job growth combined with low levels of unemployment, combined with high labor force participation rate. All of this is what we'd want to see in a strong, stable economy. So yes or no, no recession next year? I mean, I'm still, I'm not going to predict, but we've defied expectations every single month that we've been here. And, uh, and we're hopeful that if we keep doing what we're doing, continue to make progress, uh, we're, we're, we're going in the right direction. Secretary Sue, thanks so much as always. So appreciate it. Thank you. I'll send it back to you guys in New York. All right, Jennifer, excellent stuff there. Thanks so much for bringing us that conversation.